In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem called interpreting a heating curve. This is actually a pretty tricky problem. So in this problem, you're going to be given the heating curve for a particular molecule, mine is for substance S. You're going to be given some information about two other molecules. I'm being told about substance Y and substance Z. And you're being asked to identify the heating curve for substance Y and the heating curve for substance Z based on the information that's given to you in the problem. The information that's going to be given to us in the problem could be related to any feature on the heating curve. It could be anything. So I want to point a few features out of this particular heating curve. Um, and then I'm actually going to go over to Alex so you can take a look at the different options um, that we have for the possible heat uh, heating curves for each substance. So first of all, as a reminder, this very first plateau on the heating curve, this corresponds to the melting point. So if it's telling you, for example, that substance Y has a lower melting point, we would expect to see this plateau happening at a lower temperature or corresponding to a lower temperature. This temperature right here is the boiling point. So if you had a substance that had a higher boiling point, the, this plateau would be up higher on the temperature axis. Those are pretty straightforward questions. Unfortunately, that's not what I was asked in this problem. I was asked um, for substance Y, it has a lower heat capacity in the gas phase, and then Z has a lower enthalpy of fusion. Like, those are both pretty tricky. So for heat capacity, heat capacity is referring to the amount of energy that it takes to raise the temperature of an object. So this is going to be the energy needed to raise the temperature, which is the definition that you probably already know. And the way that that corresponds to um, a, a heating curve is the slope of the line during that particular state of matter. So for me, um, I have a lower heat capacity, I'm just gonna say HC in, it says in the gas phase. The lower heat capacity in the gas phase that means that when you have a low heat capacity, that means that it takes less energy to raise the temperature when the substance is in the gas phase. And in terms of a heating curve, this corresponds to less time for the temperature to increase. So the temperature increases more fast, more uh, more more faster <laughs> so we have a faster temperature increase um, specifically for me in the gas phase and even more specifically the way this corresponds to our uh, heating curve is that we will have a a steeper slope so a uh, steeper Line, a steeper slope, I don't think that's the math word to use, the slope will be more steep. So instead of, um, instead of maybe having a slope like this, it would have a slope like this. The temperature is going up much faster. In the gas phase, so on the heating curve, this portion of the graph is what corresponds to the gas phase. So since substance Y has a lower heat capacity in the gas phase, I'm going to expect to see something that has a sharper uh, or more more significant slope slope closer to one I don't know my math terms here has a steeper slope when it is in the gas phase um, the if you were being asked a question about the liquid phase you'd be looking at the slope of this line and if you were asked a question about the solid phase you'd be looking at a slope for uh, this line if it had a higher heat capacity that would mean that it you're just doing the opposite if it has a higher heat capacity that means that it requires more energy to raise the temperature that means it's a slower temperature increase that so that would mean that you were looking at a more gradual slope um, substance Z, it says, is just like S, except for has a lower enthalpy of fusion. So the enthalpy of fusion is re referring to the amount of energy that it takes to for fusion, that is melting, the energy that it takes to melt. If it has a lower enthalpy of fusion, that means that it requires less energy and that means that it takes less time to melt. And the way that that's gonna come across in a phase diagram is the, the line, the part of the graph that corresponds to melting, that's gonna be a shorter line. It's gonna take less time 
to get to the point where it's done melting. So this will be a shorter plateau. Uh, we could also see this question being asked for the enthalpy of vaporization, which would correspond to um, this plateau right here. So this plateau is going to be our delta H of fusion melting, and this plateau would be our delta H of vaporization, if you were asked about that. So for this, because I'm being asked about the lower enthalpy of fusion, when I go look for my um, heating curve for substance Z, I'm going to be looking for a substance that has a shorter line right here. Now, it does say that everything else is exactly the same, so that means my substance Y needs to have the same melting point, it needs to have the same boiling point, it needs to have the same slope for the solid and the liquid, and the only thing that's going to be different is the slope of this part of the graph right here. And for substance Z, the only thing that's different is the enthalpy of fusion, so again, I'm going to see the same melting point, I'm going to see the same boiling point, the same slope for every single line the same length of plateau for vaporization. I just want to see a shorter distance here, a shorter line for the fusion. Let's go look at the different options that we have. So here is that same problem. For substance Y, again, this is one where all that we're looking for is a steeper slope for the gas phase. Um, this graph right here, our melting and boiling points look the same, but this looks like the steeper slope is at the liquid phase. That's the center um, slope, not the gas phase. So this isn't right. This one uh, looks like the slope is different for the solid phase. So this one isn't right either. Um, this one looks like it is the one that we're looking for. Um, so we have the same melting point. We have the same boiling point. The slopes look the same for the solid and the liquid. And the, the slope is significantly steeper for the gas. Let's just look at the other two just to make sure. It's kind of hard with these because you see how the, the heating curves aren't lined up with each other? That makes it difficult to compare. This one has a different melting point, so that's definitely not right. This one also has a different melting point. So C is correct. The only thing that's different is the slope of the, the line corresponding to the gas phase. For Z, this is the one that had the lower enthalpy of fusion, so this is the one where we're looking for the shorter plateau. The first plateau should be shorter, but everything else should be the same. Uh, and oh, this might be it, actually. The slopes of all of the lines look the same. The melting point and the boiling point are the same, but that first plateau is definitely shorter. Let's look at the others. Um, this one has a different boiling point. That second plateau is up high. This one has a different slope for the gas phase. That's not correct. That's not what we're looking for. And this one has a uh, looks like also a different slope for the gas phase, and it has a different slope for the solid phase. That's definitely not what we want. And this one has also a different boiling point. The second plateau is lower. So it is the first one. Again, we're looking for the graph that has the shorter, smaller first plateau.